Welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today, we get to speak with Dr. Amy Novotny. She founded the Paber Institute with the mission to provide pain, stress, and anxiety relief to those who seek a naturalistic form of treatment when other treatment methods have fallen short. Her methods have helped countless people reduce and eliminate pain, stress, anxiety, orthopedic surgeries, sleep issues, and the need for medication. She co-authored two Amazon number one best-selling books. One is Don't Quit, Stories of Persistence, Courage, and Faith, and Success Habits of Super Achievers, which both share her journey on how and why she developed the Paber Method. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thanks for having me, Flavia. It's a pleasure to be here. Really, really nice. and looking forward to this. Well, it's great to chat with you, especially because you've just helped so many people. I mean, it's your journey is incredible. Tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Sure. So I started off with getting a doctorate in physical therapy, and I worked in that field for about five years. And at the time, I started looking into things differently. And at a certain point, I was also training to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And it I was training eight miles on the treadmill three times a week, running in about 55 minutes for those eight miles. And I started shifting the way I held my body and my breathing mechanics. And all of a sudden, the chronic, typical runner's aches and pains went away within minutes. And I got off the treadmill. I was like, wow, I don't need to stretch. I don't need to foam roll. I don't need to scrape. All those things that physical therapists and trainers tell you you have to do in order to stay healthy. All of a sudden, I didn't have to do it anymore. And that started me thinking differently. And I experimented on myself. The next marathon I ran dropped seven minutes off my marathon time. And if you're a runner, that's that's a huge difference because that was just a, over a month or two. And I didn't change anything other than my body position and breathing mechanics and blew through the qualifying march for Boston. Next one after that, another seven minutes off until I was down to a 319 marathon. And this is, I'm just an average Joe Schmo runner. Nothing, you know, I didn't do running in school or college or anything. It was just for some reason I was stumbling on this process and it eventually led me to developing this Paber method. And at first, you know, like anything that's new, especially in the medical world, you get a lot of pushback. A lot of doctors that said, no, you're not allowed to do this on my patients. And I kept pushing through because I got success stories and people started flying in from around the country to, to work with me specifically through this process to help them avoid surgeries. And just to make a long story short, I was then hired by a photographer, a world famous photographer to travel around the world to coach him in this method. And we did that for about six months to help him avoid a knee replacement surgery and rotate our cuff biceps tear from a fall he had just had. And I did that for six months going to the art all the way down to the Antarctic, to Antarctica, to photograph emperor penguins. And when I finished, I decided to start my own business and practice and get this out there to the world. And that's led me to today where now I help people all over the world virtually through Zoom. That's amazing. And how do you link, so pain, stress, and anxiety relief, right? Mm-hmm. Pain uh, is mm-hmm. very physical, uh, mm-hmm. can also be emotional, but stress and anxiety tend to be in the mind, but then they are exhibited in the body. So what is the link between between mm-hmm. your physicality and that that kind of mental state? Yeah, absolutely. It's an excellent question. And the link is there's a nervous system in our body, the autonomic nervous system that runs our organs. It plays a role in digestion, sleep. It plays a role in calming us down or ramping us up, putting us on high alert. A lot of times people will understand what it feels like to be in that fight or flight mode and have trouble relaxing or calming themselves down. And that nervous system, that sympathetic fight or flight nervous system, that plays a role in so much of the ailments. And that's the common denominator in all of these different conditions, whether it's someone going in for orthopedic surgery, chronic pain, stress, anxiety, panic, insomnia, high blood pressure is often also related to this nervous system, not 
not completely, there's diet and other things, but there is a component of your blood pressure that's related to this nervous system. And so my view and my lens of the world changed to wanting to address that nervous system because I saw so many people struggling with these different ailments. I'm like, what is it that we're all missing? And it's literally that nervous system. And however, so walk us through Mm -hmm. how you named your system. Um, P-A-B-R is how it's Mm -hmm. spelled. Mm-hmm. Power Institute um, is something that you founded, but th- what is power? Like, why is it named that? Sure. And how sure. did you? Because I like, you know solopreneurs love to name their babies, right? They love to name their businesses and their <laughs> products. Um, yeah. Tell us about naming of that. That was a little bit hard because I wasn't really sure what to call it. And I was discussing with a friend wanting to start a business and this process. And he said, well, what is it that you do? And I said, well, I'm taking someone who's in pain. At that time, I just focused on physical pain, not mental and emotional emotional or trauma, but just, I was taking someone from pain. I'm working to get them some type of relief, but in order to do that, I have to change the way they breathe, not breath work, but the breathing mechanics, but I also have to make them aware of their nervous system and the state their nervous system is. So the friend just said, oh, well, pain, awareness, breathing, relief. Why don't you just call it PABR? And that's literally how it came to be because I was so confused about what to call it. So I said, you know what? Good enough. Here we go. I love that story. Yeah. Well, you owe that friend a cup of coffee or something. And, and I yeah. guess thank you because it can take months. And yeah. I know entrepreneurs struggle for years to name their thing that they're mm-hmm. creating. And build. Uh, yeah. So that's a great story. So for you, for anyone who's listening, who has an expertise or something that they've created, like a system or a method uh, or something that they teach, how do you go from being an expert in something to making it your business? What are some tips for someone else who's going through that same journey? Yeah. So I usually say, if you have something unique, first, you have to kind of discover what is it that's unique and can you turn it into a process that you can make it digestible for someone or it serves them or provides value to them. And then once I had that point, it's a, it was a matter of how do I start to get this information out there. So I could do it through ads, but what I do is so personal and revolves so much about the relationship I have with people. It's like, okay, I really can't just put ads out there. No one's going to be interested. And it's hard to get value off of something that's just a written text when usually most people need some type of explanation about what I'm doing with them. So then it became, okay, what audiences, where's my avatar? So I started attending different events and it's going to sound crazy, but I was interested in learning about investing. And so I said, okay, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone and I'm going to go to different events investing seminars where people do not always pay attention to their body, but I know they are probably in pain. They are possibly looking for one-on-one attention because they might have the means or they don't have the time to go into like a group setting. And so that's truly what I did. And shortly thereafter, at one of the events, literally two months later, I was pointed out a gentleman named Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He co-authored it with Susan Fletcher, and he became very famous in the investing world for that book and is considered one of the most famous financial authors in the world. And soon I was helping him. So people became aware of that. And that got me a little bit, gave me more stages, more people were curious. And then I started getting on podcasts. So when you're going about trying to change your life or bring something to the market. It's really about who can you provide value to? And if you do a good enough job, they just tell others about it. So I don't advertise. I just work my tail off to make sure I do a good job with with people. And they become kind of my ambassadors. And most often than not, I don't even ask them to do it. I just, I don't even tell my clients, hey, if you, if you really valued my services, can you share this with other people? I don't even say that. I just spend extra time with my people and they have my cell phone. I just really dedicate to their health and wellness. And and that's been my way of developing a relationship with someone to help boost and develop my business. And that's amazing. And for you, where are you taking this business? Obviously, mm-hmm. all businesses have uh, a life cycle, right? You know, they're, yeah. they're born, 
they grow up and they change and shift. Are you at a place right now where you're looking to add anything to what you do? Absolutely. So this year was a little bit of an exploration into that. I started live virtual courses. So some people cannot afford to work with me one-on-one or they really enjoy a group setting. And so I started hosting a fundamentals course, which is a small group sessions where I'm guiding people through this process. So they get this still one-on-one attention as I'm guiding them through this process. We troubleshoot. And then that has led to an advanced course that lasted 12 weeks. I'm still in the middle of that. I've had another fundamentals course and I keep getting even more comments, feedback. People can't make certain times. So my next up and coming release will be a video only course and that will guide people through this process. They won't get the attention one-on-one, but what I may do to help with that is have an like a set of office hours once a month so they can still come and ask questions because it's extremely important to me that they get the information. It's none of this is about hey, I just want you to learn this process and off you go. It's can you learn this process, integrate it, so it actually makes a difference and helps you feel better. And so obviously not everyone listening is a runner, but Mm -hmm. you've helped people that don't run. I mean, you've helped, as you were saying, people in the finance world, Mm -hmm. investing world. I'm pretty sure everybody listening has a body. (laughs) So (laughs) can you share with us, it's a very short tip, something that, Mm -hmm. you know, won't take an hour to explain. Obviously you have a lot of you teach and mentor and coach on, but what's one actionable thing that someone listening today can take away just to help them in their everyday life? Sure, absolutely. So if you're sitting here and listening to me, I really, really recommend you sit back in your chair, get off the edge of your chair, get off the bouncy therapy ball, sit back in a chair with the back to it. Look at how you plant your feet on the ground, make sure they're flat. If your knees are lower than the level of your hip crease, the crease kind of right at your groin area. If your knees are lower, then you need to get your knees on top of some books or lower your chair or a combination of the two. And what that does is when you relax into the chair and you have your knees in the correct position, it allows your back to relax. It allows you to calm down without doing anything else. I can't tell you 100% of the people I work with sit in a way that ramps up their body, makes themselves tense and creates body pain, 100%. And I won't even, we don't even do anything first until their position for sitting is is corrected. And let me tell you, so much of pain and stress goes down just when you fix how you sit to allow yourself to calm down. Great tip. I have two questions for you. Sure. One is what's your stance on caffeine or you know sports drinks that are caffeinated as like an energy boost? And then after that question, I have one more question to ask someone with your expertise. Sure. So I haven't had caffeine it's been, I got, I got off caffeine probably about 15 years ago and I've still run a hundred miles. I've several, a couple times I've run 40 marathons. Caffeine is a detriment to society. It blocks a hormone called adenosine, which is supposed to build up in your body to increase the, the pressure to sleep at night. When you have caffeine, you're blocking this process from happening. And so when caffeine half-life comes about six to eight hours after you have it, you feel this sudden pressure of sleepiness, not because of the caffeine, but because the adenosine is rushing into your system. And I highly recommend people get off it. It's it's horrible. And you're talking to someone who as a kid drank six Mountain Dews a day. So I was, I was truly addicted and I went off of it. And that was a very, very long month of detoxing from caffeine. And I won't go back on it. And my healing improved, my ability to sleep improved, so many benefits. So I understand people want that energy burst, but if you need that energy burst, that's telling you there is some sleep issues and you'll be much healthier if you fix the sleep issues to allow yourself to be rested so you don't need the caffeine burst. There are people right now who just gripped tighter. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm sure. (laughs) And they're probably not thinking very kindly of me right now. I I totally get it. But I've been there and I can say that I truly have walked the walk. I mean, going from six Mountain Dews a day to nothing, that was hard. (laughs) Well, I'm not a fan of caffeine. I've seen the difference um, in just mental performance, physical performance Mm -hmm. when you uh, get off caffeine. I've seen it myself. I first 
Well, I, I didn't drink coffee until well into graduate school. So oh. I was never a coffee drinker until really, I think my third year of graduate school. So I was much older when I had my first coffee, but unfortunately it is addictive for a while. I had a, a pretty strong coffee habit. And then pregnancy for me was a, you know, a reason to give up caffeine and coffee mm-hmm. and all that. And just the benefits of having given it up really showed me night and day. And so I'm mm-hmm. not a fan. So it's interesting to hear all yeah. that. But I know yeah. people who can't function without their, you know, three, yeah. four five cups a day. So, um, Good to hear. And then the other question for some of your expertise is what do you think about standing desks versus sitting desks? Yeah, I like the standing desks as long as it's adjustable. Some people have a standing desk and all they do is stand, but I like the ones where you can adjust them and you can go up and down. And the reason is our bodies are not meant to be stationary in one position for too long, whether that's standing or sitting. So I recommend people stand for a little bit, sit a little bit. Your body needs breaks in order to relax. And we want your sitting position to be a position of relaxation. That's also why I gave you that tip on how to actually sit so that your body accepts relaxation is because when you sit, if you lower your standing desk and you sit and you're working at the computer or whatever task that you're doing and you allow your body to relax, you're taking away, well, you're actually regenerating or you're improving your energy because now your energy is not being diverted to holding you upright in a rigid posture. You're basically taking your energy back and saying, oh, okay, I'm going to be in a more relaxed position. I'm going to allow myself to sit. So now that energy can go towards my mental processes, whether it's focusing, analyzing, writing, whatever that is. So I say go both ways. And for you, you know, next, are you going to start doing a lot more speaking? I know there's so many demands on you and your time as an author of books. And how do you decide where to put your time? Because I'm sure if you just said yes to everything that came across Mm -hmm. your desk and every opportunity and every uh, travel opportunity, you'd be working, you know, more than 24 hours a day. So how do you regulate yourself so that you don't get overextended? Yeah. And part of it is I actually have been traveling a year and a half and I've been speaking. So I've already done the speaking, the speaking part of it and traveling and doing all that. And I take breaks. So I'm very cautious about my day so that when I plan something, I put 15 minutes in between sessions with people so that I have a break so I can get up, move around, walk around decompress. And when I'm traveling, I do similar stuff where I have a day I travel so that there is a break between the day I stop traveling and when I start working with people. So I'm very cognizant of how to take care of my body as I do all this. And in terms of choosing yes or no, what am I going to do? It's I kind of get a vibe for when I'm talking to a a group, if I'm going to speak to them, I see if anyone else has had any experience with that group. And then from there, I'll make a decision. If I think that I can really reach a large group of people and it's people who are interested and ready to take action, that's going to encourage me to go speak to that group. And for anybody that's interested in learning more about you, do you recommend that they first go to your books or should they first go to your website? How do people connect with you to learn more? The easiest way is probably the website. They can get a book there, but they can also listen to interviews. They can get free information. They can experience some of the things I have on social media. There's a lot of free content out there to give them a taste and a flavor before they decide if they want to book that discovery call. And the discovery call is is required for anyone I work with just to make sure that it's the correct fit and they know what to expect when we're working together. Well, your website is in our show notes. So for anyone that goes to the podcast website at lifestylesolopreneur.com, you can get the website URL. It is paberinstitute.com. Paber is spelled P-A-B-R. So paberinstitute.com. Dr. Amy Novotny, you are amazing. You do so much for so many people. I can't even imagine how many people you have helped 
helped to the point where it really changed their lives because physical discomfort, anxiety, stress, pain, all these things, they keep us from accomplishing the things we want to do in life. They can be real obstacles, like huge walls, and you help people push through that wall. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much, Flavia. It's been an honor. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.